All right, today we're diving into a real tech mystery. It's a classic whodunit, really. You've got this Proxmox server crash. Seems like an open and shut case, right? But as you'll see, it was way more deceptive than that. You know, if you've ever run your own server or a home lab, you know exactly this feeling. It's that, that cold drop in your stomach, that panic when you realize something is seriously, seriously wrong. And that is precisely where our story kicks off. So picture the scene of the crime. A Proxmox server, poof, it just goes dark. The user, they managed to get the main system back up, but then they hit a wall, a huge one. Every single time they try to fire up a VM or a container, the whole server just crashes. I mean, a hard crash. Okay, so you're faced with this, right? The system completely falls over the moment you try to do any real reading or writing. What's your first thought? Your gut reaction? For pretty much all of us, there's one really, really obvious suspect. Yep, the storage, the SSD. I mean, it's the component that's getting hammered the most when a VM boots up, so it makes sense. And in our mystery, the prime suspect was a solid state drive that was only about a year old. And listen, this wasn't some no-name drive. We're talking about a Samsung 990 Pro. You know, a high-performance consumer drive with a really beefy endurance rating, 1,200 terabytes written. This thing should have been a tank, which, of course, just makes the whole mystery even weirder. So, what's the first logical step? You interrogate the suspect. You run a tool called SmartCTL to pull its smart data. Think of it like getting the drive's complete medical history. It tells you everything from its temperature to any errors it's logged and its overall health. And bam, right away, a piece of evidence just leaps off the screen. The smart data reports that its percentage used, basically its wear level, is already at 11%. Now, hold on, 11% in one year? That sounds pretty bad, right? I mean, that's a good chunk of its rated lifespan gone in just 12 months. It feels really high, and it immediately makes you think, aha, it is the drive. But is it really that simple? And this is where the plot starts to twist. Because even though 11% looks bad, folks in the community were quick to point out that, hey, for a server that's always busy, that kind of wear, it isn't necessarily a death sentence. So it was a strong clue, for sure, but it wasn't the smoking gun. It wasn't definitive proof that the drive was the real killer here. Okay, so the drive's health is suspicious, but we can't convict it just yet. The investigation pivots. What's the next logical step? Well, you look at the data on the drive. What if the file system itself got scrambled somehow? And this is where a really important hardware detail becomes relevant. That Samsung 990 Pro being a consumer drive, it doesn't have something called power loss protection, or PLP. That's a feature, usually on enterprise drives, that protects data if the power suddenly cuts out. And guess what? This drive had seen 13 unclean shutdowns. That is a perfect recipe for total file system chaos. But another dead end. They run file system checks, FSCK for you Linux folks, and nothing. No critical errors that would explain these catastrophic failures. So now the smart data is a maybe, and the file system seems fine. Our number one suspect is starting to look pretty innocent. So let's just step back for a second. Everything everything was pointing to a storage problem. But every test we run comes back clean. If it's not the drive, then what in the world is taking down this server? And then, the breakthrough. After all of this, a full memory test is run. And the truth comes out. It was the RAM. Faulty RAM. So here's what was actually happening. The bad memory module was silently scrambling data while it was in memory, before it even got a chance to be written to the SSD. The poor drive was just doing its job, faithfully writing down all the corrupted garbage it was being handed. So from the outside, it looked exactly like a failing drive. You know, this whole mystery is just a fantastic lesson in troubleshooting. So let's distill this down into a practical playbook, something you can actually use the next time one of your systems starts acting up. All right, lesson one, don't trust a single number. You can't get tunnel vision on one metric, like that 11% wear. You have to see the whole picture. Second, test your memory, and test it early. Don't make it the last thing you check. Third, really understand the limits of your hardware. The fact that this was a consumer drive without PLP was a huge clue. And finally, and this is the big one, backups, backups, backups. The only reason this whole story didn't end in disaster was because there was a solid backup to restore from. I think the biggest takeaway from all of this is pretty powerful. Your hardware can literally gaslight you. 
The symptoms scream one thing, making you absolutely convinced a perfectly good component is failing, while the real culprit is hiding somewhere completely different. And there's this quote from the original story that just nails it. Blaming the drive is often like blaming the thermometer for the fever. It's perfect, right? The SSD wasn't the problem, it was just showing the symptoms. The actual sickness was deep in the system's memory. So that leaves us with one final thought to chew on. This whole thing was about RAM pretending to be a bad SSD. It really makes you think, doesn't it? What's the sneakiest, most misleading hardware failure you've ever had to solve?